Thank you, Rosemary. It's a pleasure to be here. We've battled storms, pandemics, et cetera, and we're actually finally here live. Can't see anybody, but I'm sure you guys are here. Um, so thank you for coming, and thanks for your kindness for staying. So tonight we're going to talk about kindness. Is kindness an instinct? Short answer, because it's late, yes. Uh, Mother Nature takes no chances, and we have young that are born very dependent. Uh, and so we have to be wired to take care of one another. And the way that's reinforced is by the fact that the process brings us joy. So you can see on this mother's face and the shining joy there, you saw it earlier with Magda and Carrie. You can see that throughout the life cycle and that joy not only extends to caring for children, but it can care for anybody. You can care for elderly, you can care for friends, you can care for strangers, you can care for animals, you can care for environments, you can even care for things and lots of people do. So it's a trait that takes us far. Stefan Klein is a psychologist, and he talks about the fact that we have mirror neurons in our brain. And mirror neurons are what mirror what we see. It's his belief that this explosion took place around 30,000 years ago, where we developed far more mirror neurons in our brain. And that allows us to trans information, transmit information non-verbally. So you see in this slide, this woman is smiling. And that's triggering the mirror neurons in the other woman's brain. So that is how we've interconnected. And that allows us to create these complex civilizations in which we live that require high degrees of communication, et cetera. So in fact, you see kindness through our mirror neurons is actually in our name, and we are called humankind. So as my very funny psychologist friend likes to say, so what could go wrong? So I think two things are going wrong lately, making kindness feel that, like it's in short supply. One of them is overcrowding. In November of 2022, we surpassed 8 billion people on the planet. Our brains were designed to live in communities of 100 to 200 people where we knew everybody and we stayed with them throughout our life. And the second problem is social media. So we now live in this interconnected world where not only are there 8 billion of us, but we actually know what they're doing. And the amount of suffering around the globe is extraordinary. Look at Ukraine, Iran, China. And what are we supposed to do when we're home lying in our bed and yet we're finding out about all these people suffering? One of our speakers just mentioned that fight, flight, or flee, right? That's our sympathetic nervous system. That's our arousal system. And when we hear about these, these disasters or struggles that people are having, our sympathetic nervous system gets triggered. But those are primitive responses, fight, flight, or free. They're not going to work. So we have to come up with a better idea. What's the better idea? How can we live in this complex society? My idea is actually very simple, and it's kindness. It's if we could all go back to our instinct, which is kindness, then we can get back to our name, which is humankind, and we can all do better. So in 2019, I came out with this book called Be Kinder. And in it, I gave 64 different examples of kind acts by strangers. In fact, uh, Carrie was in the book as one of the beautiful examples. My daughter Joy was in the book, uh, now with her husband, but that was her, her boyfriend at the time and the kindness he had showed. So, Lately, though, kindness to strangers has been a little dif more difficult because we're all at home. So it reminds me of the old joke, which is, how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Anybody know? Only one, but the light bulb has to want to change. So instead of out there talking to strangers, this is actually my first live speaking engagement since 2020, yay. Um, I've been at home uh, doing mostly telemedicine and working one-on-one -on -one with people and talking to them about kindness. But instead of talking about kindness to other people, my focus during this pandemic has shifted to self-kindness. Why? Because think about those mirror neurons. You're going to do what I do. So I have a lot of power in just being kinder to myself. And right now, we've all been under tremendous stress with that sympathetic nervous system in a state of hyper arousal, whether it's the midterm elections, the pandemic, et cetera. So I'm trying to teach people lately to put the oxygen mask on themselves first. It's not selfish 
to take care of yourself. It's essential to take care of yourself. And I don't mean consumerism, go out and shop, go to parties. That's not the type of care I'm talking about. I'm talking about real care. And that means you need to understand your nervous system. We must shift from this state of sympathetic hyperarousal to activate the opposite side of our nervous system. That's our parasympathetic nervous system. Para simply means around. And our parasympathetic nervous system is nicknamed the tend and befriend or rest and digest. So here you see this woman beautifully stimulating her parasympathetic nervous system. She might be doing that deep breathing that we just learned about or the yoga we learned about. She is not at a fetish club, I'll tell you that, because that's not good for parasympathetic. But getting out there in nature, breathing, all those things help you feel more centered and grounded. In addition, releasing oxytocin is a way to get us back to kindness. Oxytocin, if you're not familiar with it, is called the love or cuddle hormone, nicknamed nature's marijuana. And there are certain things we can do to release this in our brain and our body that will make us feel calmer and happier. Once we've learned to take care of ourselves, then we can ripple that out to other people via our mirror neurons. We can start to help people that we're similar with because we're going to understand them better, like our hunter-gatherer relatives with 100 to 200 in a group. Once we've mastered taking care of them, then we can move towards more complex tasks of taking care of people that we don't know, people scattered around the globe. I don't know if anybody here is uh, familiar, but of course this is Princess Diana who was known as the Queen of Kindness because she went around the world to help other people in need. And I'm positive you can see from her face she derived tremendous satisfaction from this. So I'd like to conclude tonight by thanking you all for coming and your kindness for listening and to urge all of you to think about kindness as an instinct and how you can bring more of that into your own personal life with self-kindness and how you can ripple that out to the people that you love and care about and then constantly widen that circle and in Einstein's words, embrace all of humanity. Oh, yeah.